Good afternoon, colleagues. I'm very glad to see all of you again. I'm Svetlana Pakasova. I'm pre-sale engineer in Streamlabs company. And also there are two of my colleagues who will help me. Maxim Viremeyev, Vplay product owner and project manager, and Viktor Bershansky, my technical assistant. Uh, during all the time of my presentation, you may write your questions in the chat window, and uh, in the last part of our meeting, me, Maxim, and Victor will answer to your questions. Um, today, I'm pleased to welcome you at the second presentation of the new Vplay features. And uh, I will start again with a short introduction about our company and uh, about our products. So let's start. First, a couple of words about our company. Uh, Streamlabs uh, is an international company uh, which provides professional solutions for terrestrial, satellite, uh, and cable television stations for IPTV and OTT operators. Uh, Streamlabs places um, in 160 countries since uh, 1991. The main goal of our company is uh, development and production of uh, professional solutions for television and telecommunication companies. Um, Streamlabs company works in several directions. Um, First, uh, hardware and software solutions for monitoring of broadcast quality and uh, for control recording of TV, radio uh, signals, TV and radio signals. Uh, second direction is multi-channel SDI boards for uh, input and output of uh, television, audio and video signals, SDI boards. Um, and third direction is uh, the equipment for closed circuit uh, television systems or CCTV. Um, the most important uh, direction for us today is uh, hardware and software solutions for the organization of the broadcast channel and uh, for um, advertising insertions and uh, for graphic design for TV channels. Uh, this is our broadcast automated system, Vplay. Uh, so let's talk about Vplay. Uh, what, what it is Vplay, what uh, it is used for, and so on. Uh, now look at the scheme, please. Um, as uh, for the automation of television systems, it is important to say uh, that the company offers solution either for central or regional television companies, and also for satellite and cable television and uh, for streaming over the network, for web streaming and OTT. Um, today, uh, we are going to talk about broadcast automation, and uh, for the beginning, I would like to talk about uh, the play system in uh, general terms. Um, first, it's important to say that Vplay is a multi-channel broadcast server uh, with the capabilities of a broadcasting center. So uh, here we are talking not only about making of a television signal, uh, but also about um, multi-channel bro broadcast automation system, about uh, building channel graphics uh, for each broadcast channel, about subtitling, uh, I mean multi-language uh, DVB and ATC subtitles, uh, about normalization, uh, automatic normalization of the level of output volume, um, or in other words, automatic lambda's correction. And of course, about uh, interactions with uh, regional AD insertion marks. Uh, one of the Im most important feature uh, of Vplay software is um, the flexibility of its configuration. Uh, so it makes uh, Vplay the ultimate tool for each possible task. Um, now, uh, let me give you some more details. Um, first, the player can configure the input signals for uh, each channel individually. Uh, the player also supports multi-format playback. Um, architecture, it means that the player supports all major input audio video signal formats, uh, as well as the most common media file formats. Uh, the player also supports simultaneous and uh, independent operation with several channels. Um, here I mean uh, channels of insertion and channels of broadcasting. And uh, of course, the multi-channel play playback is also supported. <coughs> Architecture of Vplay uh, built, um, um, is built on client-server technology, and all server functions are managed through the client software, client application. Therefore, we can remotely make playlists or schedule uh, through the integrated Vplay channel manager editor. Uh, also, in the standard uh, Vplay package, we have a built-in remote scene editor for uh, graphic environment and channel design. This is uh, the place an editor. And also, uh, if you need the high quality record uh, of your signal for using, for example, in post production, we have the specified software product uh, in the same package uh, with the play. Uh, this is our B-REC software product for 
multi-channel recording of uh, video signal in television quality. Uh, so, as we can see, the play is very functional at, uh, and at the same time is very flexible in configuration. And um, it has a very logical and nice and user-friendly interface. And a little bit later, I, I will show you. Uh, so now, um, so now, here you can see um, the main characteristics of replay. Um, as I said before, uh, it supports multi-channel playback, uh, supports any uh, interfaces and formats, uh, supporting uh, of advertising insertions, and so on. Uh, so now uh, we have the basic understanding of replay, and we know its possibilities. Uh, and now let's move on to something interesting and new. I mean, let's talk about the new features of replay. Um, what we will talk about uh, today? We will talk about the following things. First uh, is the management of the external devices. Here I mean matrices, uh, external graphic systems, um, and so on. The next one uh, is remote audio and video monitoring of input signals. After that, uh, we will go to our new and uh, long-awaited web interface for uh, monitoring uh, of the status of the play server. Uh, then, after then, uh, we will spend some time um, speaking about synchronous, uh, high-quality recording uh, with our direct software. And then uh, we will end uh, the conversation with the direct Ultra HD intro or uh, XAVC recording format. So let's start in the following order. <laughs> the management of external devices or control of external devices. One second. In this part, um, I'm talking about um, the management of uh, video routers, uh, external graphic systems, uh, resource features, and so on. Um, as you know, automation systems and uh, broadcast servers do not exist in a void space. Uh, there are a lot of technical equipment uh, around them which um, commute input and output signals. The new version of uh, vPlay 5 um, allows us to work with all this equipment and uh, we added a new functionality, the control and the management of external devices. Uh, now uh, vPlay 5 uh, supports several types of external devices. Uh, there are video switchers um, for switching uh, input and output signals, uh, external graphic systems for uh, overlaying channel graphics, uh, headend platforms um, for controlling input and uh, output IP signals. And also, uh, in your release, we added a management of uh, reserve switchers by GPI. Um, for example, for switching between main and redundant channels. Uh, all this, uh, these devices you can see uh, in the scheme. Um, how you can control the external devices? Uh, in the uh, replay config, our configuration program, um, you can add external device, uh, configure its connections, add some presets um, with a description of the comments. Any device can be connected to one uh, of several channels on the server, but uh, not to the other channels. This uh, thing is important. Um, this way we can limit or share the access to channels for several different devices. Uh, next. Uh, plug-in system. Uh, the management of external devices is built on a plug-in system. Um, and uh, the list of uh, the devices can be expanded uh, by request of the customer. Mm. If the client needs uh, the supporting of any device he has, uh, he can contact us and we will implement uh, this support. Mm. The estimate time of such implementation is about two months. For example, we can support uh, the management of some kind of exotic external graphics system. Why not? Okay, uh, now let's go uh, to interface. Here we can see uh, the example of the connection. Um, what we uh, will do here. First, we connect some external device to our broadcast server. Uh, at this screenshot, uh, we can see the process uh, of connection itself. Uh, to connect uh, a device, first we need to go to uh, external devices tab. Then we choose add external device and uh, select uh, the one we want to use from drop down list of connected devices. This screenshot uh, shows the process of connecting the Kramer matrix. 
architecture, uh, when we are setting up the broadcast channel, we firstly connect all available equipment uh, in the configuration program, for example, this way. Uh, and also, we connect all input signals or lives. Uh, for example, live signals from the studio or uh, from somewhere else. Uh, online shooting, offline shootings, and so on. And then, after connection, uh, we may configure them. When the devices are connected and configured, uh, we can connect them to the broadcast channel. So, next week, screenshot. On the current slide, uh, we see the first stage, uh, the connection. The device itself is indicated by a brown frame. Um, in the screenshot, you can see it. Uh, so, now let's configure it. For um, any of the connected devices, for example, for the Kramer Matrix in the screenshot, we set the name. Uh, and choose the type uh, of connection. Here you can see COM port and LAN. After setting up the connection, uh, we need to create process for controlling the device. Um, here I mean uh, process with which we can control the device uh, from the schedule. As you can see for the Kramer matrix uh, in the screenshot, we specify the input port and the output ports. The number of presets uh, is not limited. You can create any set of presets according to your wishes. <laughs> it's pretty good. Um, so uh, we have the device uh, that already connected and configured. And uh, now we can attach it to the broadcast channel. Uh, let's see the next screenshot. This is the addition of external devices to a channel. In this moment and uh, in this place, we allow the channel to use the external devices. Or uh, in other words, we connect it to a channel. Um, here we attach the presets uh, that we created earlier uh, to the channel. Um, architecture, we tap uh, the checkbox allow the use of the devices, um, the device for this channel, and select the process that we want to use. Process additional uh, addition is dynamical. Uh, in other words, we don't need to reboot the server uh, when adding uh, presets. It is not required. Um, so I think uh, everything is quite simple and clear <laughs> with this setup. And, uh, Let's go next. The most interesting option uh, when managing external devices is uh, the Play Software API. Due to this option, it is possible to control from the schedule of one channel um, the events of the another uh, neighboring channels. Um, it may be playback channels or uh, channels of recording. The most important is that uh, these channels must be within uh, the same server. It's an important thing. Uh, what I'm talking about, uh, from the one instance of replay, we can control another instance of replay, uh, or we can control direct channels uh, or many other devices. For example, uh, we can give the command from the schedule of one instance of replay to start playing a block or um, to launch uh, channel graphics to another instance of replay. Or, as I said before, we can manage the recording server. Mm -hmm. Mm, using the software GPI gives us the opportunity to share access to devices. Uh, it means we do not have to use all the devices on one channel. Uh, for each channel, we uh, can choose any external devices we want to work with. Um, and this is how the setup process looks like. First, uh, we need to add an external device. Uh, here it is uh, internal GPI, the screenshot. Um, we make the same actions uh, like with the metrics from the previous example. So we add internal GPI and configure it. Mm -hmm. We set some specific GPI name. Uh, you can use any name that is uh, convenient for you. And then we create the pairs of GPI events. Here we create output events that will send a comment and paired input events that will receive this comment. For each GPI event, we can specify a unique combination of input and output signals. As we can see in the screenshot, we have a total of uh, 16 slots for the signal. And uh, using their combinations, we can create a huge number of uh, unique GPI process with which we can control channels and external devices. Then, um, after setting up our presets, we configure the GPI for the channel. Uh, we check the box, allow use of GPI. And uh, then we select uh, the process um, which we will use on a particular channel. Mm, this is the last uh, action that uh, completes the setup process. And uh, after that, 
we can use this very convenient and flexible functionality. Um, so again, um, using external event control, we can manage events in one schedule. Uh, to use this feature, um, what we will do? Uh, we put the outgoing GPI in any place uh, of our account schedule. Uh, then, um, when this position, ah, sorry, uh, we put the outgoing GPI uh, in any place, as I said before, and then when this position is triggered, the uh, active line in the schedule, the playing position, will move to another place in the same schedule uh, in which we have appeared in current GPI. Um, or the same way we can manage events between schedules. Um, when the outgo uh, outgoing GPI is in one schedule and the corresponding input GPI is in another one. Why it may be necessary? Uh, for example, when switching to live in, uh, in one schedule, we can send a GPI command uh, and run background or picture in picture from another schedule. Or we can use um, uh, this functionality in the news program when we can launch from the main schedule a scenario located in another uh, schedule on the second channel. Or another option, we can manage external events and applications uh, from the replay schedule. For example, we can start recording in direct program. And um, one second. And how we can do this? Um, firstly, we set the outgoing GPI uh, to align in the schedule in channel manager. Um, like uh, an example, as I said before. Then we need to start VREC program, our recording service. Um, and in VREC, we select the option recording by schedule for the channel. Um, and uh, there we add a recording event for an incoming GPI. When the current replay entry uh, in the schedule in channel manager program will reach our line with the outgoing GPI, VREC will receive the corresponding GPI input signal and uh, the recording will start automatically. This is uh, convenient, for example, for live uh, broadcasts. Um, and uh, in this situation, uh, we will not forget to start recording simultaneously. Uh, so it is very convenient and functional. And uh, I think let's let's move on. Uh, we play remote preview. Um, this is a uh, remote audio video monitoring of input signals uh, and broadcast channels. Here we are pleased to present you uh, the new VPlay Live Remote Preview functionality for input signals control. This functionality allows the operator uh, from a remote workstation to control the picture from external sources and uh, to make quick decisions while working with them. First, uh, let's look at the classic version. Here is uh, the organization of the reception of external sources and their control. On the slide, uh, you can see how the scheme is uh, usually implemented. The playout system um, can receive uh, sources of any kind. Uh, it can be internet streaming or live broadcast studios or uh, off-site shootings uh, and so on. And all these signals were previously uh, taken to the converter gateway, then were decoded into an SDI signal um, and synchronized. And uh, then uh, they were transferred uh, to the video router. And after all these modifications, uh, the signal were already distributed to the server and uh, to the monitoring system. Mm, the air operator could watch uh, the signals with an additional monitor. Um, what are um, the advantages of the classic scheme? First, uh, the scheme has proven itself uh, to be highly reliable. It is installed on many television channels. Uh, it is familiar uh, and well-developed. But uh, what disadvantages of uh, the system do we have? Um, first, um, it is a large number of components and a high probability to failure of any of them. Mm, just look at the scheme. Um, this decision requires the usage of costly TV equipment and um, SDI infrastructure. And uh, as we all understand, it is very expensive. Now, uh, let's look at the slide when we offer our alternative solution. This is our scheme. Um, in our architecture, uh, which you can see in the diagram, all the previously uh, described components are already included in VPlay software. 
uh, the player receives uh, the same signals from the internet, from um, a live broadcast, or from online shootings. It means that all signals go directly to the server. Um, in the scheme, uh, we play channel the box, uh, you can see it in, in the blue frame. Here, in the channel in the box, uh, these incoming signals are decoded, uh, synchronized, and uh, distributed across the channels. Uh, next, um, a proxy in the I stream is formed for all uh, these external synchronous sources. Um, it is a stream with a short delay, it means that usage of NDI format uh, provides us um, the minimum delay, usually one or two frames. And uh, then when the channel receives this uh, NDI stream, it can use uh, these external sources to make um, live insertions from uh, studio, to use the signals um, in channel graphics and so on. And then um, after, um, after the channels, this output uh, signals with overlaid graphics with um, studio live insertions uh, and so on, um, the signals goes uh, to the NDI encoder. And the picture is formed here. Um, the out, uh, output stream, I mean the signal formed after the channel, also generates proxy NDI stream. Uh, we may view this stream on the local network, uh, and um, all these streams can be transferred with a regular network router. Mm, so you can watch them via specialized software uh, on a multi viewer with NDI support. In the scheme, you can see NDI multi screen by Streamlabs. Uh, or you can use other uh, software components as, uh, at the operator's workplace, uh, same as uh, multi-viewers or NDI viewers, uh, because it is free software. Okay, um, one more important point. If you need to create uh, not a proxy stream, but a full live stream, it is also possible. Um, the one thing, uh, if you form the full live stream, uh, the amount of data increases proportionally. Okay, um, so uh, let, let's go to the interface again. Um, in this screenshot, uh, you may see how we use it. Um, here are the uh, checkboxes of enable remote preview in the configurator. Everything is uh, pretty simple. We only have to enable the sources preview in the input signal settings and uh, in the channel settings. Just two marks and uh, our functionality begins to work. Hmm. Okay, um, let's talk about advantages of this solution. First, our technology provides uh, all the functionality of the old solution. Uh, but at the same time, we reduce the number uh, of system components. Uh, we don't need to create a costly SDI infrastructure anymore. And uh, it is enough to have standard uh, Ethernet infrastructure. And so congratulations, we just have saved a lot of money. Okay, let's move on. The next thing. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is our long-awaited web interface for monitoring the status of uh, the replay broadcast server. Um, now we have several possibilities. First, uh, we can control the status of uh, the replay services. Next, we can view the system logs of the channel. And finally, we have the possibility to download as run log files. Look at the screenshot, please. Um, this is our web interface. Um, one note, uh, our web interface is available either at local host uh, at port 8000 or from the network. Uh, a login password is not required yet because uh, at the moment we cannot make any changes uh, by the interface. But uh, in the nearest future, we plan to transfer uh, the administration and server settings to the web interface. And uh, then the connection will use standard authentication. Um, save with uh, the administrative rights, you can either configure the server or uh, download as run logs. Uh, what do we have now? Uh, in our web interface. Here you can see uh, running the play channels with color coding. Um, red color means the channels is off. Uh, green color means uh, on and okay. Uh, here we can see only green channels. Uh, so it means our channels are okay. Um, next, uh, we can see the input signals. In our screenshot, uh, the services are working. And uh, the names of uh, the web sources are also visible. 
The next one um, is the block with working uh, plugins and external devices uh, used in the system, all the equipment. And uh, of course, in our web interface, you can see the running VREC recording channels. Um, they are violet uh, lines in the bottom of the, of the page. Uh -huh. mm. About interface, I think it's all about interface. Um, our web interface allows uh, the work with logs of entire system. Uh, there are two types of logs. Mm, first, channel logs. Technically, it is logs from uh, the server with the service information. You don't need to connect the server anymore, um, like we did it before. Now you can see what happens on the channel uh, right from the web interface. I mean, every event that could happen on the server, uh, any external events, any errors or accidents. Um, you can see the point when the computer uh, have launched Mm, the point when the, the services um, have started and, and so on. And uh, the second option is as run logs. Um, uh -huh. um, uh, there in as run logs, we can see what um, content was played on the channel, uh, what was the order, um, start and stop points, and so on. And uh, we can download all uh, these logs in Excel format. Um, you can see this option uh, in the left, upper left corner, um, download log file. And all logs can be downloaded for any day. Next. Um, there is also an interface uh, for quick changing of text messages. Here we can put the text um, and uh, here we can work with it uh, in real time. Uh, in other words, we provide the opportunity to an operator for fast and comfortable work with rolling crows. This is an equivalent uh, of our existing tool of, um, for taking tasks for a rolling crow from a file. Technically, we create a graphics scene for a rolling crow uh, using a template, a template uh, with dynamic updating. Um, then we assign the task to take text from a file and uh, after loading the scene to into a channel manager, we can work with this task using our web interface. Um, we can create text files, um, we can delete them, and uh, we can edit them according to our requirements. All changes will be displayed on the screen a few seconds after when uh, we press the update button. And uh, architecture, when we change uh, the text blocks via the web interface, we edit the text file uh, of the task which is located on the server. And a uh, couple of words uh, before latest useful updates. Uh, first, we uh, added the spell check uh, in uh, the text tab. Um, and, um, and the second, now we support uh, the hieroglyphic languages, um, including Chinese, Korean, and Japanese, plus Arabic and uh, other additional languages. If you are interested in the web interface, you can uh, get the access to the real uh, working web interface right now. Uh, you will be able to watch uh, how it works and, and touch it. Uh, so just write to the chat and we will give you a link. Okay, let's let's go next. Direct Multicam, um, new features. Um, first, let me briefly uh, introduce Direct in several simple words. Vrec is multi-channel recording server uh, that, uh, that is built into the replay automation system. The recording service, uh, this recording service can work in several modes. First, uh, it can start recording at the operator's command. Second mode is uh, recording by schedule or uh, by external events like uh, GPI um, I mentioned earlier. And also, uh, it has a mode for digitizing content from a VCR, um, manually or by lists. Uh, thus, we implemented a new functionality, synchronous recording uh, from external sources for studio multi-camera recording. Um, now, uh, the VREC interface has um, the possibility to form synchronous recording groups. Um, it is important that uh, the channels that we combine into groups can be located not only on one server, but also on uh, several different servers within the same local network. 
On each server, we can process up to five HD channels and uh, while combining several servers in a local network, we can process as many channels uh, as we want. Um, the sources can be a studio or um, a live broadcast or the play servers, uh, like in the scheme, any source you want. And uh, to control the input signals, we form an NDI proxy stream uh, for viewing at a remote client location like uh, like it's shown on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, now I want to tell a couple of words about interface. As we can see uh, in the screenshot in the VREC interface, we have a new block on uh, the right side. In this block, we can find all connected recording channels. Here we can select uh, the channels we need, combine them into groups, uh, and uh, here we control the simultaneous start and stop of recording for several channels. OK, and uh, let's go to the last interesting subject for today. Uh, it is the support of Ultra HD AVC Intra or XAVC format. Um, our recording server now supports the format of the recording for um, the production of content. Um, I mean the format which is used uh, in the production of content in 4K resolution uh, or post-production. Um, this is Direct XAVC. Uh, this format uh, has several advantages. Uh, first is iframe coding. Uh, that is, each frame is keyframe. The color format is 4 to 2, uh, and according to this, XAVC uh, doesn't lose quality in the process of recounts. But this format uh, has one big disadvantage. Uh, it is very heavy. Mm. And uh, using this format, we will have a large amount of content, uh, approximately 160 gigabytes for an hour of recorded material. What our VREC is uh, able to do for production? The first feature is a multi-channel recording of content from multiple sources. Um, we can write in uh, two formats at once. First, um, First one is full size Ultra HD XAVC, and the second one is Proxy HD XDCAM. XDCAM is light enough for editing and uh, for previewing content, and uh, we can write both of them simultaneously uh, by the request of the client. Uh, we have this option. Um, and uh, this well quality content is good enough uh, for video production, and it is supported uh, by systems such as. Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, Avid Media Composer due to the plugin system, DaVinci Resolve, and uh, Grass Valley Edios. Also, uh, it is very important to remember that due to iframe encoding, XAVC is a very resource demanding codec. It is encoded not uh, by the video card, but um, by the CPU. So uh, we can supply several single unit servers, uh, one server for one channel. And uh, we may assign a recording channel to each server. Um, and uh, we can manage the recording with this heavy codec uh, of several channels synchronously from uh, the remote VRA client. OK, um, for today, it is all uh, I wanted to talk about new features and capabilities of Replay. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to write them to the chat. And of course, uh, we will be glad to see you at our other webinars. Thank you all for your attention. Uh, and now I'm happy to introduce again my colleagues, Maxim Virimiev, uh, Replay product owner and project manager, and Viktor Bershansky, uh, Replay ed uh, engineer and technical assistant. Now we will ask two questions. What questions do we have? <clears throat> there is a question if there are any improvements to the scene editor uh, if it's if it's uh, I'm not sure why uh, I would understand if uh, any additions uh, what about improvements uh, Daniel could you please uh, why, why um, 
uh, why would you think it needs enhancements or improvements? Uh, is it lacking something or is it poor quality? I mean, if you have any complaints or, uh, okay. Uh, Daniel is uh -huh. interested in displaying of weather feeds. Pogoda. Pogoda. Uh, yes, uh, it is possible. We um, can use um, the the. Uh, uh, we can use the. Uh, the, the meter sensor. What? You mean what? Sorry. Streamlabs uh, meteor sensor to use or. I'm sorry for the option. Okay. Uh, no, no. Uh, I I wanted to, to say that uh, we can use the um, preset with uh, with um, how how can how can I say it with dynamical updating and uh, use uh, RSS line uh, as a task for this. So uh, we can take uh, some weather report uh, from. Um, any site you want uh, and uh, make uh, the scene for uh, for scene editor and uh, goes on air with your weather report. But how can show I can grab it based on the weather conditions? Um, Daniel, uh, you can use for uh, for graphic. Uh, you can use um, TGA files. TGA. Uh, this is di dynamical. Uh, files with um, um, alpha channel and uh, you can download them into the scene and uh, it will be moving some something moving and on the screen In other words, uh, you may take uh, the uh, text from RSS line, yes, uh, and for the graphics, uh, you can use the graphic files with alpha channel. Uh, this is um, the ga, the PNG. Um, you can download, download them into the um, graphic scenes and uh, it will be your graphics. <clears throat> okay, there is another question. Um, we are going to use a cloud server for the vplay. Uh, um, how can we fit our local studio live to the vplay? Uh, how can we fit our local studio live to vplay? They are not in the same network. Uh, so, uh, 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 you can use uh, uh, SRT or uh, RTP yes. protocols. Yes, for, for yes, exactly. This. Exactly. If it's on a different network, so you have to use some protocols over the network, which is in our case, it's either SRT or RTMP uh, feeds. So yes, it's it's possible. Uh, 
it's possible. Ah, okay, Daniel. Um, um, I believe we missed you. Uh, how can show a graphic? Uh, looked the RSF feed, um, but now um, how can show icon graphic based on weather conditions? How can we show RSS? Yes, RSS. Yes, exactly, exactly. No, uh, currently it's not available. Daniel, currently is not available. Exactly, RSS is only feed. So yes, graphics, graphics feeds. Mm, uh, the, it's in the plans. Actually, it's in the plans. Uh, it will be enhanced. Uh, uh, it's it's in the development, but currently it's not available. Mm, but just need some time. So maybe uh, to the next to the next webinar. Uh, to the next webinar, it uh, will be, uh, might be available, option, this option. <coughs> we are talking about different things. Um, if, um, if you need to download uh, uh, text, um, whether data in text format, uh, you can use RSS. Uh, or um, if you want to, uh, to make uh, some kind of... Uh, moving graphics with uh, sunshine and uh, raindrops um, you can use uh, the graphic files uh, with uh, the alpha channel uh, and uh, use them as uh, the graphic design for uh, this um, this uh, weather reports this weather conditions uh, yeah daniel you see uh, what svetlana is trying to say there is um, there is animation animation is available uh, yes, animation, animation. animation sorry I animation is available it's uh, you can use tj files uh, for this purpose uh, but it will be custom mm, uh, i understand what you are asking for you're asking for the uh, basically for the pictures uh, uh, as a part of rss feed okay uh, so but um, regarding the terms uh, yes, uh, but regarding the terms, uh, I'm a technical person, so um, I will have to consult about the uh, terms. Uh, yes, yes, Daniel, yes, I understand. No, I understand. I understand your request. I understand what you mean, in, uh, what, you have in, what you have in your mind. So, uh, uh, it, the, the, the developers are working on this, okay? Uh, so technically, I believe it will be available. In terms of uh, in terms of dates, uh, how soon in the future? I have no idea. We will have to. I will have to contact our uh, product manager. Uh, so the best the best option, if you are really interested in this, uh, just uh, contact uh, our support. Uh, they will connect you to our, they will answer the question or they will connect you directly to, to the product manager. So uh, that's the way to go. I, I really apologize that I cannot answer this question because it's more managerial part than, than technical one. Yes, uh, this option is yes. This, this option, uh, this option is uh, available. Uh, YouTube links. Uh, yes, you should be able. You should be able to add uh, YouTube URLs. Uh, so yes, like like any others, like any others. So. It was shown on the slide uh, of our web interface. Uh, here we have web. Uh, or else, mm, and some of them can be uh, from YouTube. Uh, how about uh, adding YouTube lives? Ah, no, they were around. Ah, I, sorry, sorry, I, I thought it's a new question. Okay, okay, yes, no problem with uh, YouTube, no problem with YouTube. 
uh, and it's not only YouTube. Basically, it's uh, any valid, any valid uh, URL uh, should be should be playable and displayable and used as a feed for the for the display. Okay, I see you got our answer. Mm, Daniel, anything else? Oh, guys, somebody else. We are very happy when you ask questions. You know, it's, it, it gives us some perspectives, what you are interested in, and uh, uh, can Virel be configured record YouTube streams? Uh, I think only by schedule. Uh, so basically, I if you send some, some comment of the schedule only this way, uh, in simple uh, way, no, it can't. No, no, the question is no. The question is no. The answer. Uh. Um, you can input. Uh, the YouTube signal uh, into the uh, channel manager, uh, into your channel as an input. And uh, while starting uh, um, translation uh, from YouTube, you can add an external event um, at, the, um, at the same line, at uh, uh, the exit line with uh, YouTube. And uh, Virac will receive uh, the paired uh, GPI. Um, and only in this way you can start uh, recording automatically. Basically, yes. Uh, basically, yes. Uh, if you if you make uh, what what you can do, you can use uh, YouTube or any you know, as an input okay, in a schedule. So basically, and what you can do in a VRAC, you can uh, uh, record whatever is currently whatever is currently is playing. So once. Uh, once it starts playing, uh, you, you, you will be able to record it. Um, happy with that. I just got them installed yesterday. Happy with that. I have seen, love the interface. Would, would love to see enhancement to the graphic editor. Uh, so yes, uh, as, uh, as we spoke before, um, to make graphics as a part of RSS, it's a part of the plan and developers are working on this and yes yes and we are happy that you are happy uh, basically yesterday when you are ah, yesterday so you are working on we played just since yesterday okay yes. it's too short uh, so if you're happy for one day i believe you will be happy once you uh, work on this like a week or two because you will learn uh, it's uh, really very uh, versatile application, uh, diversified in, in many ways. So we are, we are glad. We are glad that you are happy. Thank you, Daniel. No more question. Media, uh, media, media metadata. Can we modify metadata? Uh, Um, I think uh, in, in in some kind of traffic system or maybe I don't understand uh, the question. Mm, neither. Um, I'm not sure what this question is about. So if I upload an episode, can the episode title, descriptions, can be added to the file? Yes. 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 That's the purpose. That basically, that's the, that's the purpose uh, of the metadata. Yes. Uh, to, 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 to be able to uh, add some text. Yes. 
basically um, you are you're the one who is forming metadata um, for the all this uh, additional information uh, so yes you 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 will be able to um, add title descriptions and i believe uh, there are some standard tags uh, like predefined already and uh, you can add some custom tags so the the answer is yes uh also can we create schedules from a web service currently no uh no no currently no it's just uh, it's it's, in, it's, in the, it's coming it's in the process of development uh svetlana mentioned this in uh, in, in 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 her intro uh, not introduction in her presentation uh, uh currently you cannot it's basically it's just displays it's not that much settings uh, can be done through the web interface but it it works it it works so it will be a lot of enhancements and development in uh, in this part of the application mm. uh, do i need to log into the server um uh, it is not required yet uh, at the moment, uh, we cannot make any changes by the interface, as I said in my presentation. Uh, so um, now we have no authentication. Uh, but uh, in the near future, when uh, uh, when we um, implement uh, these uh, modifications and uh, when and when we uh, will how to say it. <laughs> uh, when we will have uh, the possibility to make some changes through the web interface, uh, um, the connection will use the standard authentication, login password, and uh, different types of uh, administrative rights for user or for administrator. Um, Daniel, you're asking if uh, we play a web interface, uh, uh, you said you can update dynamic links. Uh, I believe there is some conf confusion here. Uh, um, uh, we, play, no, we, play. we can um, uh -huh. update. Go ahead. Uh, no. So uh, there is some kind of confusion here. Uh, currently, currently, web interface uh, has a limited function, mostly for displaying, okay, of information. You you you, you will be not able to uh, add something, modify and stuff like that like i said it's uh, it works i mean uh in interactive interactive part of uh web interface it, it works so mm. uh, the, the only thing you can uh, modify through the web interface is uh now i show you uh the um, tasks for uh the scenes um to to, to the schedules um if you have uh, a schedule, uh, the files uh, within it, um, you can make a scene with a, a template uh, with dynamic updating um, and uh, tell them to take uh, take the task for uh, this scene from a file. And uh, here you can see uh, the implementation of um, of actions with these files. Uh, every block is uh, technically a file on the server. Uh, and when you mm, make some changes in these blocks, uh, then click update, uh, you modify uh, the text files of uh, tasks for scenes um, that are located on the server. Mm. This is the task uh, tasks for uh, the scenes for uh, rolling crawls. And uh, here you can modify it. Uh, this is uh, available. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the uh, the scenes can uh, can take uh, the tasks uh, from here. Uh, this is the um, 
Uh, this is the same as uh, the files that located on the server. Uh, this is the same files. Um, here you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay. <laughs> Thank you for your questions, Daniel. Daniel, you are welcome. And like I said, we appreciate your questions. Okay, it gives them gives us some perspective uh, what our clients might be interested in. So we really appreciate this uh, interaction with us. And thank you for your praise. Mm. Do we have any clients in Sri Lanka? I know that we have many clients in India. I am not sure about Sri Lanka. It, uh, yeah. It's more question to the support and sales. Uh, we are marketing uh, uh, arm of the company. We have a mix of marketing. In Canada, yes, we do. Yes. We do. We do. Mm. Thank you, Ilya. Thank you for your compliment. We appreciate this too. Thank you. In, in Canada, um, I, I don't remember his name. Uh, I met him in a, in an app a couple of times. Um, yes, it is one. Uh, yes, I know. Yes, I know one client. Not many. I know one client. Yes, I um, I met. Okay, yeah, the guy is, the guy loves everybody. It's a book. It's a book. Yeah. You will become okay. Yeah, it's okay. okay, Daniel. It's it's a, it's a very promising. I would say it's a very promising prom promise. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. So it means we do not work in vain. Uh, our effort will be rewarded. It's it's good. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, most active today. So if today is most have active any... Daniel. Today is most active Ilya. So I will address my question to to, to, to to the most valuable and active guys today. Ilya, Daniel, any more questions? Okay, yes, you always nice, uh, can contact. Uh, nice to meet you too. You. See you soon. Okay, Daniel is done with the questions. Uh, Ilya also said basically goodbye to us. So I believe, thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Ilya. You are very active. You are very nice to us. Thank you, guys. So we really appreciate. Have a nice day. And uh, Svetlana, probably it's time to wrap it up our section. Uh, our session. Yes, I agree. Uh, so thank you all for your attention and for your questions. It was very interesting. <laughs> Thank you all. Goodbye. Thank you, guys.